Hi, Mr. Eckert here, and today we have um, a program I'm going to write that calculates the roots of a quadratic using the quadratic formula in Python. And uh, at the end, I may leave this for my students, is how can I improve the program? And I'll describe how at the end of the video. So first thing I'm going to do is I have Thani open, which uh, is a Python IDE, which is free. Um, I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to save the file as quadratic formula challenge Python file. Okay, so first thing I'm going to print um, enter A, B, and C for a quadratic in the form of AX squared plus bx plus c equals zero to find the roots okay and that's going to be my first line and then i'm going to get input and we're going to call that a so input um what is the value of a and we're going to leave a space here and then uh, b equals input what is the value of b the space and then c equals input what is the value of c okay so i've got a b and c coming in and um those are going to be uh, string variables. So I think we can do that. We say print type A, and we save it, and we run it. It should work. Okay, what is the value of A? It's 1. What is the value of B? Let's say 4. What's the value of C? Okay, so when I print it, it says the class equals string. Okay, so that means that I have to change a to uh, float which has a decimal um, so i'm going to say a equals float a okay b equals float b well let's let's check that that works so let's print now the type a and make sure we don't mess up okay so i'm going to run it Okay, what is the value of A? Let's say 2. What's the value of B? Just make up any number, negative 4. What's the value of C? 9. Okay, so now it's a float. Okay, so we'll do that for B and C also because we want to be able to put in decimals. Okay, um, and C equals float C. Okay, so we've got our variables. Um, they're stored as floating numbers so that they can have decimal points. So that's good. And now we need to um, we need to figure out what the determinant is. So I'm going to give a variable called determinant. Remember, if you remember from math, the determinant is b squared minus 4 times a times c. So I'm going to do b, and then I do an exponent with two asterisks squared minus 4 times a times c okay and let's um then let's print the determinant to make sure that we are coming up with the right value so i'm going to hit control and save and let's do we'll do one negative six and eight and it prints four so we got to think b squared so that'd be 36 minus 4 times 1 times 8 so 36 minus 32 would give us a determinant of 4. so it seems to be calculating the determinant all right so now um, when we have two zeros we're going to have a minimum x value so i'll call that min x and that's going to be um, it's going to be uh, negative b uh, minus the determinant and that's going to be divided by 2 times a okay and then um, and let's see if we're doing it right this time so let's uh, print the minimum x value 
Okay, and we'll hit Control S to save, and we'll run this. And I'm going to do those same numbers: one, negative six, and eight. And we should get a minimum value of two. And we got one. So we did something incorrectly. Okay. So we have negative b plus or minus the determinant. Um, let's see. So b squared minus 4ac. Ah, I forgot to, uh, the determinant is actually the square root of this. So I'm going to have to put this b squared minus 4ac. Well, no, that's not right. That's not right. Um, the determinant is b squared minus 4ac. But in this formula, we have the determinant, and we take the square root of that. So I'm going to get the square root by doing... I'm raising that to a power of 1 divided by 2, okay? And now let's see if it works. So this is why we test, because sometimes you can make errors. Um, okay, so we'll run. So we have 1, negative 6, and 8. We should get a minimum value of 2. We did. All right. Um, now let's do the max x. Okay, so that's going to be negative b plus... The determinant, okay, uh, raised to, well, raised to the half power, the square root of the determinant, and that's divided by 2 times a. So the only thing that changes is the plus. So remember, in the quadratic formula, you have the top part of the fraction is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the determinant, um, all divided by 2a. So one of them. One of them, the minimum x value is the negative. The max x value is the positive. Okay, so let's test that. So if we print the max x and we put in those same numbers, it should be 4. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, so we've got 1, negative 6, and 8. Okay, and the max value is 4. Okay, so that's working. So now we want to tell people what the zeros are. So I'm going to print, and these are float floats coming out. So I'm going to have to use an F string, which is something you use in Python. And we can say uh, print F and then call, uh, quotation mark uh, the, the lesser X is equal to, and then curly brackets, we're going to put the min X variable. Okay, so that's going to allow us, the F string is going to allow us to uh, mix a string and a float. Um, and the greater X is equal to, we're going to put max X. And we're going to close our quotes, close that. We should be good to go. We're going to test those two numbers again. And then I'm going to show you what you could improve. Okay, so we'll do one. Negative 6, 8. Okay, so the lesser x is equal to 2, and the greater x is equal to 4. Um, and we could explain a little bit about what the x's are, but that basically gives you the solutions using the quadratic formula. So pretty cool. Okay, let's run it again. All right, so let's do 2, 6, and say 11. Okay, so now we're coming up with the lesser x is equal to negative 1.5 minus... 1.802, blah, 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 and you see a J. That means we got a negative number under the square root sign. And then we have, and the greater X is equal to negative 1.5 plus 1.80, blah, 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 blah. And then we get uh, another J, which means it's an imaginary number. So we have complex roots. So when we have complex roots, it does calculate it, um, but it doesn't look that nice. Is there a way for the bonus uh, for my students that you could round that imaginary number. Uh, if you think you know how you could change the program to round the imaginary number, it's worth um, a bonus assignment. Uh, so anyways, if you can figure it out or think you have an idea about how to figure it out, uh, maybe go to Stack Overflow and look up some stuff. You could get a bonus uh, assignment. So anyways, thanks for watching and have a great day.